Hello and welcome to Saturday Sketch Club. My name is Will Iron and we are here on site at the Royal Academy of Arts in our Claw Learning Centre. And our doors are open and I can't tell you how lovely it is to have people inside the galleries. Right, so this week we are doing something a little bit different. We're looking at collage, but as ever, it doesn't matter what experience level you are, this is very much aimed at everyone. Please do share your works with us, we love to see them. You can do this using the hashtag RA Sketch Club on Twitter and Instagram, or you can update, uh, upload photos to the Facebook group, Saturday Sketch Club, and we'll have an opportunity at the end of the session to have a look at some of your collages. Um, please do use the chat, say hello. If you have any questions, use the Q&A function. I'll be monitoring that throughout the session, so we'll try and get back to as many of you as possible. If you joined us last week, we were looking at life drawing. Now, life drawing is a really important part of the Royal Academy's history. Also really integral to the RA is architecture. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, we are an organisation that is run by our Royal Academicians. Uh, and those are both, both artists and architects. We also have a really fantastic architecture programme that really explores the nexus between the visual arts and architecture, which is one of the reasons why I'm so pleased to be introducing today's artist tutor, Sarah Hersey. Uh, Sara is uh, a fantastic artist as well as a teacher and um, she studied architecture at the Royal College of Arts and since graduating has really been exploring questions around architecture and space, the built environment and home in, in, in her work. And one of the projects that Sarah has recently been working on is a sustainable self-build project in Hackney, uh, which is working with local young people to redesign and rebuild a community hall, uh, thereby giving them the tools that they need to get back into education or into employment. And the reason I'm mentioning it now is because just last week, uh, Sarah and the team managed to raise the £50,000 required to kickstart the project. So congratulations so much. It's such a fantastic project. And I know how busy you've been. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for your kind introduction, Will. Um, yeah, so today we'll be doing some collage and I thought it would be a great thing to explore because it's super accessible and we all can find materials at home that we can use. You don't even need to be able to draw. It's very, like, very low pressure, easy. Fab. Should we, um, should we get some, some slides up? Um, so I thought it would be great today to show you some examples of collage that we found in the archive on the, the RA's website, so you can all access this later. So um, this is work by Sandra Blow, and she, this is actually a collage. It may at first look like a painting or quite abstract, but I thought this would be a lovely example to look at because it really shows what you could do with collage, which is using simple pieces of paper and colour and layering. Um, and there's a, another example. So this example looks a lot more energetic because they're using different bits of um, found, <coughs> um, found pieces of paper. Some I can see some f photographic um, bits of paper as well in there. So this is by Will Aslop from the RA archives as well. You can also look this up. And there are other great examples of collages and drawings and all kinds of things to inspire you. So I urge you to look at this later. Um, and I thought this would be a great starting point just to show you what's possible. You don't need to necessarily make something that's recognisable as a figurative image or a landscape. It can be very much open to interpretation and can be, a, um, can be quite abstract and fun and more about expressing yourself and arranging things on a piece of paper. So we're building things up. I thought that would be... Fab. That sounds great. Um, now, do you want to maybe sort of introduce us to some of the materials that we can be using today? Yeah, sure. So I have a range of materials here on the, on the table for you guys to look at today. And I don't want you to feel overwhelmed and think, you know, I don't have an RA <laughs> magazine <laughs> in front of me at home with <laughs> lots of high quality images or whatever. You may just have some junk mail and that is totally fine. So I have examples here of this is just wrapping up from toilet paper that we have. We've got a, a newspaper, bits of coloured paper if you have that. I even have an example here of like my, my notepad so we can even use the lined paper. It's kind of hard for the, the camera to, I've, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's just lined paper. Um, 
so what 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 I'm what we can do now before we start is just to make look have a look at what you have in front of you. If you don't have anything, this is the great opportunity for you to quickly run around, find some junk mail, find discarded bits of bills or whatever. Mm. You don't need to share your bill information later. <laughs> Cut it up and rearrange it. So and then I, I've also <clears throat> gone through some of the magazines and picked out images that I think are, would be interesting. So, and one of the things that I would urge is just to have a, a blank piece of paper as your, as your base. But if you have paper that you've used, you made notes on, and it's lying around, that's also fine. We'll be covering it up later. So we'll be um, building on our base piece of paper. So it can be any size, really, as long as you can stick something to it. OK, um, are we on time, Will? Yeah, we're good. I maybe want to show some different ways of, of, of ripping or scissoring. Yep, so um, we, can, we can... So when you're... So what you can do when you're thinking about um, arranging your papers, just to, like, rip bits off. So that's one way of doing it. Or also you can have... You can stick things down. So I've got examples of... Um, I've got different sticking materials, basically, or sticking apparatus, you know. Um, so we've got some tape, got some glue, got some masking um, tape. But also, if you don't have anything to stick anything down, it's fine. We can just, you can arrange it and then take a photo later once you're happy with it. And that could be your way of sticking it. So you're capturing what you've done, but you may not necessarily have glue. So it's totally fine if you don't have any glue at home. You can still take part. Fab. Okay, so now you, if you haven't already, do go grab some, some pieces of paper, anything you've got to hand. And, you know, just to reiterate, it, it really doesn't matter if your pieces aren't the same as what Sarah's got. Actually, you know, the, this is the, the nature of this kind of exercise. It's sort of up to you and your imagination and what you've got around. So, I mean, if people actually only have white paper, are there still ways that they can get involved? Yes, so with, if you have white paper, so the example of Sandra, even though Sandra's um, example had colour, you can use bits of white paper and overlay it and build it up in that way. And then like the rips against the, the flat piece of paper would create a plane, create shadows. So you will still be creating something, even if you just have white pieces of, a white piece of paper, or all your paper is the same colour. You can still build it up and make an image and it can be quite abstract. It can even start to look... Um, quite refined depending on how you cut shapes so it's you you can literally do this with anything that's what we're saying Fab. Um, okay great so should we kick off with our first warm-up exercise yeah. doing a bit of Frankenstein making so I thought we could warm up by doing a fun exercise around creating a creature so I've called it a Frankenstein exercise so what you would need is if you do have a magazine a paper or um, I mean a newspaper you can start to look for a face if you don't I wish that you could make faces up from like the pieces of discarded textured paper that you have or colored paper or bits of white paper and start to like build up the face or the creature so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut out um, a face that I have conveniently here next to me. Here's one so, I made earlier. <laughs> yeah. Should have had that blue Peter moment. But <laughs> we, can, we can do it in real time rather than the frustrating blue Peter moment where they have the, the ready-made thing and you're like, how did they do that? <laughs> so, so I'm urging you guys now to just start cutting out a face, you know or making shapes that could be a face. So or you don't need to stick anything down at this time. It's something that you could work with that um, we can build up later. So I'm going to use different techniques now. So I'm going to find maybe another textured piece of paper that I have here. And then, so I'm going to make a bit of the body. So we'll be cutting this out. So this is a great time now to put some music on mm -hmm. and to sort of relax into it. There's no real pressure. It's a very quick exercise. 
So I've got the body there. And it doesn't need to be perfect. We can refine it later. And then perhaps I want some arms. So we can start to do that. So it's a quick five minute exercise and Will will interject and tell us if we're going over it. We're about halfway through. So we've got two and a half minutes or so left to keep working on your little creature. So we've still got a good amount of time. You'd be surprised. I already have some arms. She's starting to look very pop arty. So but if, you, if you've got, for example, some newsprint as well, you can go into your newspaper and find text. Because I find that text can be cut into like more of a sort of a patterned I'm gonna I'm gonna make you some patterned trousers made up of text. So that should be quite fun. Um so this is what I've made <laughs> so far. <laughs> And she is looking like she's having a fun time somewhere on a beach. <laughs> That's how I'm imagining her. Um, if you didn't have a, a head, sorry, if, if you're just working with sort of patterns or colours, how would you indicate a head with your shape? Just a circle? Yeah, so you can just make a circle and find another kind, another texture or another type of paper to kind of make a face. Even though I'm covering up her face, it still sort of reads, it can still start to read like a face. So you can start to make some eyes as well. So you can use another different kind of texture or color to differentiate where the eyes may be. So it kind of looks a bit, a bit terrifying, but still, you know, it reads as a face. It's a Frankenstein <laughs> creature, <laughs> which is why I called it Frankenstein um, <laughs> exercise, because we want to kind of move away from trying to create just pretty images and really think about the technique and arranging things on a piece of paper to kind of free, free us up. So even if you wanted to give, give her some antlers, you can start to do that as well. So it's really about thinking about what you could cut out as your, so cutting out is basically your, your paintbrush. Your scissor is your paintbrush. So, um, oh. uh, so you can make, I'm making little feet here. <laughs> it's very quick. It's like, it's kind of like letting go of trying to make things perfect. So it's like we are, five minutes. That's, that, that, is, that is five minutes. So um, brilliant. And hope you hope you enjoyed that. Um, do you, sorry, do you want to talk a bit about how and how and why you got into into collage in particular? Yeah, sure. So I think collage for me is such a wonderful medium because you can. I find it quite therapeutic. You can use things that you've the images that have already been created and rearranged them. And I think in that there's some kind of curatorial um, element to yeah. it. So I think uh, we've, we've spoken before about collage and we talked about, for example, um, Joseph Cornell who creates these wonderful boxes that are yep. co made from like collages, but he spends a lot of time, he spent, well he's passed away many years ago now, but he spends a lot of time going to junk shops or going through magazines and collecting images. Although we're doing fast exercises now, it's just an introduction into something that you could yeah. do yourself later and like really spend time arranging and like creating a, a world. And I, and I find that quite powerful. In a way, it's like, for me, a mini form of architecture, like using materials, finding things and creating something new. And it, yeah, and with the, the James Cornell, it's, it's actual 3D um, collage, which is sort of a whole, a whole new ball game as well. Um, and actually, we had there was a there was a 2015 exhibition here at the Royal Academy of James Cornell. Um, maybe actually, maybe we can. Yeah, we just put in the, Imelda, my colleague, has just put in the chat a link to that that exhibition as well, so you can check out his boxes as well. And actually, I mean, you know, I think one of the great things about um, collages is, is its versatility and and just how different. You know, we've already seen two works earlier on, and uh, again, have a look in the chat, my colleague. Imelda, just putting a few different pieces from the RA collection. So again, you can see that breadth of what collage can be. Um, fab, so do you want to lead us into our next exercise, which is sort of looking at 
abstract elements, right? Yeah. Um, I keep referring back to Sandra's one or, and the other one, Will's. Um, also. Will also, that's it, from the RA um, archives, is that you can make collage super abstract and it can be quite expressive. But for us today, what we're going to be doing is building work, worlds. So this will be the first step in our building. So we want to create a backdrop. So the backdrop for me, it would be like, it could be very abstract. And I imagine for you as a taste of like starting off quite simple and then we can start building into it. So this, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some different techniques that I will cover with you. So you can rip bits of paper up and that can start to create like your abstract or um, your backdrop for your abstract image. So I've got a big pink piece of paper as a base. But you can have a white piece of paper or you can have a discarded bit of paper or like a paper taken from a magazine. It's totally fine. There, is, there, are, there are literally no rules and we will all have something different and unique to ourselves, which I think is quite wonderful. So I'm, I'm going to um, not, just, not yet just stick it down. I'm not going to stick it down yet, but I'm going to sort of build into this. And we'll keep it, an eye on the time for us. Yeah, so. we've got five minutes to do with that in this exercise. So that's a good amount of time. So I think turn on some music, relax into it, think about what you have in front of you. How do you want to use it? How do you want to place it? Do you want to be more controlled in your arrangement than I am? Because I'm being very rough and ready with this. <laughs> Trying to get through it. So just take your time. And don't worry too much at this stage about whether it looks great. I think it, for me, it's like it doesn't really matter so much. And if if you if you have um, some images, like I have this image here, so and that already kind of has a landscape in it, and I think maybe I could use that as a backdrop. If you don't, you can just like find a bit of paper that you think would be interesting for your backdrop. So I'm rearranging now. I'm not happy with what I had. So I'm thinking, how do I get this into something that I like a bit more? So I'm going to use a bit of tape instead of gluing it down. But if you don't have any glue, don't worry. Just, um, just arrange it in a way where you're happy with it for now. About halfway through. OK, cool. Thanks. So I'm thinking, what else can I add? So I found some texture that I like, some concrete texture. But you may find something from a newspaper, you might find some advertisement for a supermarket that you like, the colour, so you can add that in as well. So I'm going to use a bit of tape to make sure that that's semi-stuck down. But we don't need to really stick anything, we don't need to make any drastic decisions just yet, we're sticking things down. So. Just doing that so I don't end up moving things around. Um, so I have my newspaper here, and I'm wondering, I quite like this back page, so I'm going to cut out cut out a section. So just take your time arranging and thinking about what, how you want to arrange it. It might be, a, a, you might have a bit more order to your arrangement. You might have a strategy, I don't know, an arrangement collage strategy. Whereas I'm just being quite um, rough and ready and just, get, just making quick decisions, but you might want to take a bit more time and that's totally fine. Is there anything that you are sort of aiming for when you're doing this background or, or is it building and seeing how it, how it comes along? I, I think for me, I'm not really 
aiming for, I'm just thinking about like what would make an interesting backdrop. So at, at this moment, it kind of feels like you're, you're setting down, you're putting down what you're going to build on, so your foundations. So you want to be able to kind of be a bit more broader in your covering of the page. So you might not want to like only have it one tiny thing in the corner. Think about like using more of the page at this at this moment. So you're building your background, but it, it's it's really quite intuitive. I think there are no rules, but I would say use one or two pieces of ripped paper to cover up um, your base paper. Brilliant. So we've about a minute left or so of people. If you're still working on your backgrounds. Yep. So if you this is your a minute to kind of finish off but also I would say when you're arranging the image don't worry about how the image is like what it actually is like I have uh, an image of a corridor but I've put it sideways so it becomes like a, a, a different thing so you can kind of play with the arrangement and the rotation of the 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 images your found images that you're cutting out or the piece of paper can have rips around the corner you want to create an interesting backdrop like a yeah, so have a think about that while you're working through it. Make sure I put this in the middle so you can all see it. I've used, I'm using a, a pink backdrop only because I feel like the white backdrop may disappear into, <laughs> onto the white um, table, but if you, if you don't have coloured paper for your background, don't worry about it. Brilliant. And I think that is time. So we're going to take a quick pause there, but if you want to keep on working, keep cutting up, keep putting down, do feel free. Or if you want to go and um, put the kettle on, you're very welcome to. Uh, now is also a great time to share any of your work so far. Again, using the hashtag RA Sketch Club on Twitter and Instagram or on the Facebook group Saturday Sketch Club. Um, in the meantime, we've had a couple of questions just coming through in, in the chat. Um, this one's quite, quite fun. It's um, about colour. So when you're working with collage, obviously, you've, you know, if you've got a coloured paper, you've, you've, uh, you've got something that's a block colour. So how do you sort of, how does that, how important is colour in collage or, or not, as it were? I mean that's a, I mean that's a really good question actually because it's the whole point of this exercise is it's so in, it's really up to what what you like so if you if you if you like a lot of color and you happen to have lots of colored materials around by all means use it and and you can still you could create something that explores color and, and you look at like contrasting colors and you want to like speak about in your work like looking at pink against yellow and how that would look and creating planes of color or you can be quite muted in your like color choices and decide that you only want to work with creams or black and white and that's also totally fine it's about thinking about your personal kind of exploration and what you find interesting so I I think if you are interested in color but mean by all means use this um, use this time to like think about that and think about like the arrangement of color mm -hmm. but if you're not so much interested in that and you're more interested in like layering things as well that that's that's also a part of creating worlds right yeah so you can create a world with lots of color but you can also have a quite monotone <laughs> like world and both are equally i think as interesting um, and here's a question um about the sort of using paper rather than card and do you have a preference as to, to paper or card or, or, or sort of using both or i think i think you could what what, what what i'm like trying to sort of get is you can do both like you could literally use paper or card i guess card would be good for like creating sort of like a bit more of a 3d effect if you've got a thick piece of card and you can think about like what how would that look you know which bits of my um my compass my arrangement on the page would do i want to pop up you know could you use the card to kind of prop things up into the foreground and things in about a bit more, a bit like Joseph Cornell's kind of style, or like a more abstract version of that. Or you could, you might want everything to remain super flat, and you might want it to look more like a painting.
painting, and that's also totally fine. It's about, I think, really exploring. And if you haven't done that before, and you're like, oh, I don't really want to use a bit of card, but you have some card at home, I think just use the card, you know, explore. This is your, no judgment. If you don't feel like it's your best work ever, you don't have to share it. Like, I'm creating work that I don't feel like is my best work. But <laughs> we're all here learning together. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a really good question from Ben, which is, so Ben is an architect himself, and is interested in your opinion of how the process of collage can be used within the design process. And specifically asking about an industry obsessed with high quality renders, have we lost the, ex the use of expressive media to illustrate ideas? I think that's such a good question, having come from an architecture background. There is that kind of that um, obsession to kind of like put things in the computer and then render it. And sometimes you get renders that look like collage, but they're actually not collage. They've been like super... And that, I think that's okay. And I think the good thing about thinking about architecture and collage and thinking about collage that's much more sort of less refined is like I think if you do a lot of consultation work which I do with the public I find that doing collage with them is like such a wonderful way to get people to start to engage with architecture so I sometimes print out um, images of really famous buildings by like star architects and people get to cut them up and like make something new um. and I think that's like such a wonderful way like when if you're engaging yeah. people outside of architecture to kind of get them to feel more comfortable because they get to chop people <laughs> chop those renders up. who doesn't love chopping yeah. up renders <laughs> um, okay great um, lots of questions in the chat and um, I will I'll keep bringing them up uh, as, as, as we go through the rest of the session but I think we should get back to it now um, so we're going to go into the second part of the session and I think we're going to start off with a couple of more images right yep yep oh. so we want to start with this one actually so this is by Chris Orr I want to say from the RA and it's another image from the wonderful archive of, that the RA website has so you can search so many like collages and lots of great images come up. I thought I'd pick this one because this really shows like if you like, really spend a lot of time arranging and thinking about um, like images and found images, you can recreate them and put them together, rearrange them, and they still look like a cohesive cohesive um, image. So, and and there's like bits it's been chopped up, but to me it still reads as one finalised image and I think that's quite fun and quite surreal um, so I thought that'd be a great image from um, the archive to use and this is an image by me that I decided to show and this is a much more kind of um, later on when you have more time or if with like less time pressure th thinking about if you wanted to create a more a narrative approach to this so this is me exploring the crystal palace that used to be um in hyde park before it was moved to crystal palace and it's like sort of trying to show that image and that story and like how the massive water lily informed the structure of the crystal palace and what that meant during the victorian time and all of the the other things that were happening and it's like you can use collage as a way to look through archival images and rearrange them to tell a, a narrative and so yeah. Well, as I was going to say, I mean, obviously, a, a lovely example of, of of not having that much color. And actually, one of the one of the questions that did come through was about color v shapes. And here, you've got a wonderful sort of repetition of those circle shapes. Yeah, yeah. You can have like quite modern, toned down colors and think about shapes and like really arranging them on the shape and being much more kind of, um, I guess, uh, much more less kind of. Um, free and ready in a way, like much more controlled. But I don't think this is just an example I thought to show like of a controlled collage. But at the same time, the other example, it's more about thinking, having much more fun, using a lot more images and creating a whole world and story. So looking at those two examples Lovely. next to each other. OK, fab. So, um, I think we're now ready to sort of go into our sort of last half of the session and this is going to be our sort of final piece and creating our final piece and doing a bit of world building. Yeah. So, um, sorry, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Um, so, okay, so we're going to start off doing the world building and we should all now have our base and we'll start to work on 
um, the second layer. So now we want to create a landscape. Some of you may already think, oh, I already have a landscape, that's fine, you know. But you can start to think about how can you cut that up? Um, how could you create, um, think about having some examples of buildings or shapes or structures? Could you use, could you find stuff that you've already sorted through or maybe you can start to cut some of your pieces of paper to resemble um, structures. So I'm going to do an example of both and really it's just about like what's going to be in your landscape. It can be quite natural at this point or it can be a built landscape but we'll be building layers on top of things. So this is the bit where I encourage you to just start cutting and thinking about like what kind of world you want to create is there a narrative to your world what can what can you do with the conf oh, like the confinement of what you have like I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm using the right language but you're sort of confined anyway with what you have so you may not have everything that you need but it's really about kind of reimagining and sort of challenging yourself I quite, that's another aspect of collage I quite enjoy. It's, it's a bit of a challenge because it's like you can't just get a bit of a pencil or a pen and create whatever it is that you want. You kind of have to work with what you have. And there's a limit to that, but there's also a fun aspect of getting around that limit, sort of pushing what you can do. Um, and then there's also there are quite a few questions here about glue and how do you avoid wrinkling with glue and, and do you put glue on first at what point do you where do you bring in sort of sticking it down as it were i would say i would stick it down right at the end if i am going to stick it down or if i if i didn't have any glue for example i would take a photo so you could take a photo and that in itself is type you're kind of you're sealing your image in that photo so I think, and if you want to avoid wrinkles, I would say probably use, um, I find that a glue stick is sort of better for that, but with glue sticks, less is more. Like you don't need to like pile it on because it'll get really lumpy. It's just about using the minimum amount of glue stick that you can, or glue on the glue stick. And, and then I think that you end up with a much more smoother result. Or you could do what I've done with using some clear tape on the corners. And it's pretty flat because there's no, like, you're not introducing any, like, PVA glue or anything at this point. But even if you have some PVA glue, just use a, a, a dab. You don't need to glue all of the corners. So how long, a question here, is um, asking about how long that piece you did, the, the one with the Crystal Palace in, how long did that take you? That actually took me probably no more than an hour. But I already kind of had a set idea of what I wanted to do, and I, and with that idea, I mean, with that with that collage, I kind of cheated because I printed out the images I wanted. So there's another way that you, if you have access to a printer, you can quickly print out stuff that you want. <laughs> but um, but I, I, but the reason I did that is because it was really hard to find the right images for that particular narrative. But. Um, so you can, if you have access to a, compu a computer and a printer now, you can kind of quickly go on a website and quickly print something off. But I think for the purposes of this exercise, it's not really, it's not really I think, that important. But if you want to, you can. So I, I really like the way this, the building now is sitting on um, all of the other pieces that I've done earlier kind of looks interesting and I sort of try to cut around the edge rather than just sticking it down as a square. So you can also think about how you cut things out. And you can, what I like to do also that I think is quite interesting is disassemble the building if I have a building or something in front of me. So you can stick down this bit and then like sort of pull out a bit that you think is interesting. So you start to break up the planes. Um, and if you, for example, don't have an image of a building or a set thing in front of you, what you can do is start to build um, 
start to build it up using paper. So I can show an example of that as well. Um, so it's like, do you want to create columns? Do you want to create floors, some beams? You can totally do that. So you can start to create a structure behind. You can start to frame things, layer it up. But that's why I said you don't really need to stick anything down yet because we're still making decisions. So I think I, I would encourage people not to stick down just yet, but to start to just create structures, lines, frame things, how, how are things looking, layering it up, looking at it, moving it around, like thinking of maybe I can chop off another bit and add something. So just, I think now it's kind of like a meditation in a way, you're meditating on your image. Maybe you want to create some funny little narratives if you can, like, add something that's unexpected to your image. And think about, like, I feel like I've created a window here, but I'm like, maybe this isn't so interesting to be behind the window. Like, what else can I put behind it? So start, start to look for an image or something that I think is interesting. So I found this image of um, some animals. I thought maybe, maybe I might put that in there and see what happens, see if I like it. But still, we're, we're not making finalised decisions. We're just sort of thinking about how we're going to arrange thing on, things on a piece of paper. So it's not, I think, um, too much pressure to stick anything down just yet. We're still building. We're still building our worlds. Although presumably if you have stuck things down, you can just keep on adding to it. Yeah, you can still layer up, that's true. It's also not the end of the world if you have stuck <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if you have and you're like, oops, I've stuck everything down. <laughs> you, can, like, you, can still add, you can still keep adding layers. You may not even like something, so you, could, you can get a piece of blank paper and be like, oh, I don't like that, I'll cover that up. And then later on when you take a photo, I mean, it, it doesn't matter, you can always keep working. Even if you have access to Photoshop, you can even later on take it into Photoshop and manipulate it even more. But if you don't have access to Photoshop and you don't even know what the hell what that is, <laughs> um, you can, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You can just think about like taking a photo of it, playing around with filters, Instagramming it. It's, there's so much you can do. There's so, the collage can go on forever. You know, I think someone said art is never finished, only abandoned. So you can keep going on forever. Um, so do you use Photoshop and how, how do you, how do you, use, do you, do you use it afterwards or do you use it to create images at a certain start? I think Photoshop is a wonderful tool to use if you want to manipulate something after the fact. I tend to I like making things by hand first. Even when I do drawings, I, I sketch it out first. And I feel like that's much more sort of natural. And then I take it into Photoshop or Illustrator and I draw over it and like refine it up a bit. Or like if you have an iPad, you could use Procreate or whatever, you know. It's, th there's so many great, even f free digital tools that you can use to manipulate your images. Um, and you can find lots of tutorials online on like how to do that stuff and and it's I think there's so there's so much now that you can use in terms of tools but I think making things by hand it's just so much more I think immediate I get my eyes start to hurt after a while looking at the computer screen but once I start making things by hand I just feel so much more connected to it um, so I think now we could, you could think about, because um, I'm kind of happy with this, but then I'm, I kind of want to introduce a, a plane, like I want to block bits out, because I think 
in some bits there's too much going on. The images are starting to bleed into each other in a way that is not, for me, interesting, but maybe for others they, they might like that. But I'm like, maybe I want to test it out and see if I put a white block behind this and like draw a bit out how that would look. And I think that's starting to look, for me, interesting, but I haven't made a decision. I don't know, like, maybe somebody can send in their opinions, be like, I don't like that, don't, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> right, let us what you think about it. <laughs> yeah. Let us know what you think, people at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's so much to do. I mean, there's so, there's just, it's kind of, I think why I wanted to do this workshop is just to show what you can make by just using images and materials and stuff that's just lying around the house and what you can do with it and how it can force you to be creative in ways that you may not necessarily feel comfortable with at times. And also, you can go off the piece of paper. So, like, if I've got an A4 piece of paper here, but maybe I want a bit to protrude out. I mean, why not? You don't have to stay refined within, um, I mean, contained within the border of your paper. You can kind of cross borders out into the other planes. Um, um, people are liking it. Oh. Feedback is good, feedback is positive. Oh, lovely. They're enjoying the white and the red. Yeah. So I'm saying that the yellow feels like it might be a bit, a bit top heavy. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but maybe I want to put some, maybe I'll put some yellow at the bottom. I quite like the, it feels like a, a frame that's, Stuck at the this is the other thing. Once you start asking for opinions on your artwork, <laughs> you start to <laughs> start to lose focus. You know, what am I going to do if someone doesn't like the yellow at the top and that one person's opinion now counts more than what everybody else's? <laughs> but I'm lots listening. Of people, lots, of people like, lots, of people also, lots of people saying how much they like the white. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think that white bit is lovely. Yeah, so like stick it in. That's yeah. Right. But I'm thinking about, but that, that's actually a really good point. Sometimes you kind of think of like, how does your image balance? Is it heavy on the top? Is it like, is there something rooting it? Maybe not, you know. Yeah, it's people about, are liking the bottom yellow as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, balance, I'm trying to balance it out now. Um, so how much, how are we doing for time, Will? So we're now at um, about 12 past 11. So we've got another sort of about 15 minutes or so to keep on adding to your work. And I think, you know, we can sort of build, build in people or creatures if you want to, I don't know. Um, but yeah, about 15 minutes left of, of creating your final piece. And obviously, if, you, if, you wanna, if you've done with one, you want to move on to a second one, please do go ahead. And yeah. if you do go on to move on to the second one, then please do share your work with us the first time around. So again, using that hashtag or on the Facebook group. Yeah, so, I mean, some of you might feel like you have something that you're quite happy with, that you want to like actually leave to the side and take a photo of or start sticking down, that's fine, send that in. And then you might think, oh, I've got more time to create and to start another one, to start thinking about all the things we covered and start to think about um, how do we inhabit it now? Because I've created the world now, inhabited by, there are some people actually in the image and some animals in the background. You might think about maybe you want more people, maybe you can start to make people in the way that we made the Frankenstein creature. Maybe you want to have some Frankenstein um, beings in your, in your world. So you can start to do that or you can start to really do some delicate cutting now. If you've done some ripping, you can think about cutting out smaller pieces, which I'm doing um, here. So I'm going to cut out this lady. It looks like she's jumping into a swimming pool. Maybe I want her in the background. So it looks like she's jumping into the image. So take your time. You, still, you can still just have a cup of tea, get some water. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're doing good for time. And if you have any questions, please send them in. Christina's saying that, so she's a photographer and um, has lots of photographs and um, so wants to use those in, in colleges. Is that sort of, do you have any top tips for sort of using your own photographs or, or using just photographs of photography? I think using your own photos is such a nice kind of like, it, it adds a, 
an extra le um, element of ownership if you want to do that. Or even if you start to put people you know or yourself into collages, um, what does that mean? You know, and you can start to look at sort of the Dada movement, or you can look at, um, I want to say, who was the art? I think it was Lanzaro Mahoney Nudge, is it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> who does a lot of like montage photo stuff, who, who I always kind of um, admired. I think also Dadaism has a lot of collage and montage and photos and things like that. So you can look at, you can be introduced even just by Googling collages, you can be introduced to all these movements that have come before about like making, using photographs as like, um, as um, as a medium for collage, and then like making montages in a way, so you can. It, it's such a a varied and diverse medium, collage. And the, the Dada is obviously used, but it also has a real sort of connection with pop art as well, doesn't it? And the pop yeah. art loved it, and using the sort of again using magazines and, and adverts and. And capitalism. Yeah, I mean, we are all overwhelmed with magazines and adverts. <laughs> so right. Maybe we can reuse them, reclaim them for ourselves. You know, make <laughs> make make materials that are sort of anti that from from the capitalistic materials in itself feels like quite a powerful way of working. And and I think also collages, I think speak very much of their time because you use images that are relevant to us now whereas and and then like years to come if somebody looks at your collage they would know that maybe it was during the pandemic because you have like an image or like a text about the pandemic hidden in your collage and it becomes like a time like a, a capture a capturing moment yeah. like a what, i don't know what, what do snapshot. i want to say a snapshot of our time that's it so it's so, it's kind of, it's really powerful in many ways, isn't it? And I think it's really a nice, a nice way to kind of capture memories. And I think going back to that question about using your own photos as well, it's a nice way to kind of capture memories from your own photos and rearrange them and use them. And then they kind of um, sort of anchor you to that time in a way. Um, and quite a few questions coming in about whether you add drawings or paint or pastel or anything like that onto your collages, whether to define areas or to add on whole new new bits. I think that's something we haven't talked about, but in some of the examples that I showed from the RA um, archive, they did have, they kind of outlined some of the images and they added some textures. So you can, I would say, I would definitely say, if you have a pen, particularly, I've got a pencil here, but if you have a pen, you can start to colour in moments. And I also have a pen. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Um, you can start to really highlight things, and it might be, I might be butchering this image, but it doesn't matter. It's a collage we can build on top. Um, but, and I think that kind of adds an extra human level of like to it, even though it's yeah, made by humans, but <laughs> at the same time, like highlighting things and coloring it in. You might even want to draw people in, you know? Ooh. You might want to draw some figures in, into, your, into your image. So I'm, I'm, drawing, I'm drawing circles here. <laughs> Linda's asking about, wor about words. Do you add words in? And how, how do, you, do you want to build? Would you yeah. write that or would you use, use sort of cutouts, I guess? Do you know, I think that's actually something that I've done before. It's quite a fun exercise. If you have a, a magazine or like a, a, um, a newspaper, you can start to collect words and add that to the image. Like I found wild randomly. I did not plan this and I have some wild animals. Maybe I want to add wild on there. And what does that mean? Like, what are you saying? Maybe you want to add, um, it can be like, you can, you can make a, like a mini, like a, a slogan or an affirmation for yourself by like cutting out words that you find in, in a magazine or in a newspaper. So I think, yeah, let's do that. I think that's a great idea. Um, Nicole saying that she's using tissue paper and quality sweet wrappers. Which that sounds, sounds nice. lovely and delicious at the same time. <laughs> I could do with some quality street chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I think definitely wrappers because they have that kind of shine to them, right? So you can add an extra, um, an extra layer of shininess in a way. And also they have a lovely kind of crinkly texture. So I, I think by all means, use what you have. 
It's a good way to eat chocolate. If you've got some quality street and you haven't broken into it yet, now's the time to get some chocolate out. <laughs> That's an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here is a question that I missed earlier, and it was when we were talking about architecture, um, and someone was asking, what is a render? And we didn't explain that. Oh, yeah, that's true. Architects are really great at not using language that people don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like we really need to work hard in making architecture language much more accessible. So a render is the computer image that's been, like, texturized in a way to look more realistic or to look like, uh, to look like something else, basically. So you build a computer... Um, like a 3D grey image and then you add a, a render on top so you add a skin and that could be something that's quite realistic or it could be something that's like um, painterly and that's kind of like if you think of Pixar they use renders like the whole of Pixar it's all being rendered and a lot of the times when you walk around in on the streets and you see images of buildings like on the hoardings you see those images that's yeah. been rendered basically thanks So I'm just now thinking of, who was the person who asked the questions about um, adding text? Uh, that was Linda. I think Linda had a great point um, around um, kind of, and that, that's the wonderful thing about collage. Sometimes you make something and you, somebody else suggests something and you're like, oh, I can add that in, you know, and it's, it's about learning from each other and that's why it's so wonderful to have your questions and your input. So I'm putting world freedom in. I, I don't know what that means, but it seems, it sounds... <laughs> um, someone's using dried leaves. They've got a feather in there. I think that's something we ha actually haven't spoken about, but I think it's a, good, um, it's a good medium using things you find in the natural environment. So you can use, um, you can use like leaves and pebbles and rocks and bits of soil. And it reminds me of, um, Andy Goldsworthy, I think. Is it Goldsworthy? Like, he's an artist, I might be butchering his name, and he works outdoors and he makes like rocks and he arranges them. And it, to me, that's a form of collage, but out, outdoors. Oh, and someone's using a draft of old poems, which I love. Yeah. Um, so, 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 Safia is asking does it help to have a story behind what you'd like to create? And so at what point does, this, does the story, is the story there from the beginning or does it help to do that? And, and, or does it sort of form as you're going? I think, I think sometimes it could happen. Sometimes you might, you might, for example, be a student, you have a project and you're exploring a specific thing. And then you can kind of think about, you can be much more considered in how you want to build the story and you have some ideas. But sometimes it can feel quite therapeutic. You might not know what it is that you're doing. Like you might not know like, but then once you start putting things on a piece of paper, you're like, you find that think something relates to something else and you intuitively start to build a story and it comes about naturally. And I think that in it, that's also quite nice and also yeah. valid so, and I think we also as people we always we start to build stories into things like I had I didn't I first like when I started I didn't really have an idea of what I was going to do but now I'm seeing like there's some sort of stories being built especially now that I've added text you know I'm kind of th there's something I feel like there's something that's emerging I don't know what it is yet but <laughs> something is happening um, here is a nice question. Where can people buy your work if they want to? <laughs> I do, I do, <laughs> I do have a um, a shop on my Instagram. Um, everything is sold out at the moment because I was fundraising for Mumford Community Centre, and I made some prints that I was surprised sold out. Um, but I will be restocking soon, so keep an eye out. And if you want to look at the type of work that I do, look on my Insta, and you'll find my shop through the link in the bio. Freedom from rotting, I don't know, I'll leave that to <laughs> um, So we've got about five minutes left, um, which is probably also a good time to ask um, a question which just came through, which is, when do you know when to stop? Okay, <laughs> this, this is a really, really great question. Because I'm thinking that now, I'm like, shall I stop? Shall I start a new one? Is there enough time? 
this is really up to you. I don't want to tell anyone that you should stop immediately. But sometimes it's about finding that balance. When you feel like, um, it depends what school of thought you're, in, mm -hmm. you're, you're from. Some people are like, less is more. They want to put two things on the page and they're finished. And some people are more about, I'm going to hoard up this image. I'm going to put everything, yeah. I'm going to build it, I'm going to make layers, which is why I showed you those two examples. We had one from the RA collection and one that I did, which is not like what I'm doing now, but was I used far less images in there. But then the other one, there was lots more. It's about when, when does it stop being interesting to you? When do you find that moment where you're like, wow, I really like this? It's about really listening to yourself, I think, and thinking about... You know, I stop when you feel like you need to stop. If you, if this class ends and you still feel like you want you want to add things, by all means do it. If you feel like you want to stop and start another one, then do that as well. So I'm still just, I'm going to keep working on this just to see what happens out of curiosity. What happens if I just keep going? Because <laughs> no I think I would have normally kind of stopped, but I, I want to kind of keep going and thinking about now starting to inhabit it a bit more, like add more people. I quite like this lady who looks like she's jumping into a swimming pool at the top. Um, I want to know what happens. I may not like it, but we're still in the arrangement time. I'm not sticking anything down just yet. And when you when you do stick it down, when you're doing your your official um, your sort of the piece, your pieces, do you, how what is your process for sticking it down, and, and, and what process do you use for that? Um, so my process for sticking it down would be to kind of because it can feel quite intimidating because we're at stage right now where we've got layers and layers of things we haven't stuck down. So what I like to do is take a picture. And then, like, if I really, really like the arrangement and I want to make sure it's exactly the same, I'll take a picture of it. Or I just start to use some tape. Because I would usually scan this and then make it into a flat image. Oh, yeah. um, so I would start using some tape to make sure things don't move around. And if you have a smartphone or iPad with a camera, you can take a picture of it. So you can, when you start to take it apart, to glue things down, you know, like, what, what your arrangement was and you have a, mem a memory of it. But at the same time, um, it's, there's so many different techniques. It's really about what you're comfortable with. So I'm going to, I'm kind of sticking things down. But I think I'll take a photo of it rather than... Um, stick everything down, but I quite I'm, I'm loving using this clear tape, but I'm going to use some um, Some masking tape to show like what you can do if you have a tape that's not clear You know, we don't always have this Access to all of these like materials of clear tape I, I, I know for a fact I don't have any tape at home, so you can start to use tape as part of your collage you can start to take things off. So similar to um, tracing paper, in a way. Yeah, yeah. And color, I just noticed now that with the um, masking tape, it's quite, it's a bit see-through and it creates an interesting effect. So you can see the dark image underneath. And you can like look at how that could work. With two minutes left. So two minutes two left. Two minutes to finish your collages. I kind of want to challenge people to keep going, even if they think it's finished. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of like to push it to a, a place where they wouldn't necessarily be comfortable with. They may feel like it's too much, but what's going to happen? You know, I'm I'm quite a control freak when it comes to <laughs> collaging, but I'm really coming out of my, my shell here. Um, and this this is a. I'm commenting about how, how you mentioned Andy Goldsworthy before, and what's your opinion on people using real objects rather than images in collages? So things like leaves or a CD or, or, or the tape itself, which I think you've, you've just, just, just demonstrated. Yeah, I think that would be actually quite nice. If you had a CD, what would happen if you started to cup it, cut, cut it, cut it up or disassemble it somehow and I think it's always interesting when you start to use materials and things we will find in the everyday in an unexpected way like even just this exercise of cutting up letters that I found and creating a, a strange 
weird <laughs> sentence, but <laughs> it, it feels a bit fun, a bit unexpected. And it's like, it will, immediately when people look at it, they'll be like, what does this mean? You know, it creates a mystery. And I think, um, I forget the name of the artist, but he made a comment that, want, that said that sometimes you want to leave some like room for interpretation in your images where people can put their own, like loose ends where they can put their own narratives in. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have less. Sometimes when you have more, there's more room for inter interpretation. And we're coming up to the end. I think about 30 seconds left of collaging. OK, I'm like, everybody, now time to, time to panic. Start cutting really <laughs> Start cutting things. I don't know, really. It's like, maybe just sit down and kind of look at um, what you have and see if you're happy with it. And maybe like at last, do some last minute arrangements. Have a sip of your cup of tea or coffee or, or whatever. Put, some, like, put, your, put on a nice tune. Listen um, to some music. And again, this is something that you, know, you can absolutely come back to afterwards at any point. Right. So thank you so much, Zara. That was fantastic. Um, and I hope you guys managed to, to get something out of that. We've now got the chance to look at some of your collages, um, which I'm really excited to see because, again, you know, I'm really excited about this bit because it all depends on what you've got at home and what you've been working with. So let's get those up on screen. Sorry, you have the clicker. So oh, you wow. can click through and um, have a look at these. Oh, this is lovely. Uh, I love this. And I love the psychedelic eyes. It's like, this must be the one of the Frankenstein. Um, it's, this is, I, I was excited about this bit um, <laughs> to kind of see what I've, other people have done. I love this and I love the use of, um, the eyes just really st stand out for me and, and like the hat, and it immediately reads as a creature. Mm. That's lovely. I love <laughs> this one. Is, <laughs> this one is super cute. I mean, I'm, yeah, it kind of brings joy. I love the colors. Thank you, Nicola. I think this is really lovely. And I also, there's, they have some shears. I wonder, it feels like she might be doing some gardening. Um, she's picked <laughs> the flowers that she's wearing for her crown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, I think this is a great example also, because it shows what you can do if you have no, like, actual recognizable images, just like the first one, in terms of, I mean, recognizable faces, and you create your own sh sort of shape and face. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> 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 oh, God, these were so joyful. I think this is so lovely. I would wear those trousers as well. Yeah, the, the trousers look like they're in vogue. So, <laughs> And that's one other thing, actually. I think collage is used in fashion because mm. it's used across the board in, like, in creative industries. So it has such a variety to it. And there's so much you can take from it in a way. Like if maybe this might inspire someone to start their own line of... Mm. But jeans, this is lovely. I think this is really, really nice. And they also have a similar p paper that I have, the toilet paper. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have exactly the same pattern. Amazing. Um, I, I love the mountain, kind of, and, and it kind of looks kind of um, in a snowy or kind of very fresh early spring coming out of winter. You can read into it. I'm already making a narrative. That's lovely. Well, this is so nice. Um, I like sort of like the bunting, it's very joyful. And there's some writing, I wish I could read it, it's kind of a bit too Smell far away Smell the me. sea and something, something let your soul in softly. Oh. Something about the sea, something nice about the sea. You definitely get a sense of the sea there. And I like the map in the background, it kind of, it makes me miss going on holidays. Yes, <laughs> yes. It makes me miss air travel, maybe we should all be doing less, but I, I, I want to go on holiday. Um, and this, this is a good example of also using pen and using like materials that you can find at home. And it's quite abstract. It kind of reminds me, in the, similar to the example that I showed right at the beginning from the archives. So this is nice. Oh, and this was by age seven. Lovely. It's good to know that there's some young people joining us. Um, and this is super like abstract, but I feel like there's a theme. There's a lot of textiles. It's, you start to naturally pick up themes or create. Maybe you're kind of forced to make a theme, theme because that's what you have. But this feels quite intentional, like dressed up. Um, feels so dressed good. up. Yeah, feels so good. That's true. It does. It feels good to leave the house and dress up and yes. not be in front of Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually at the RA. We're not um, doing this from my house. We are actually at the RA, and it's open. <laughs> and it's open, so you can come and visit. Um, 
I think I quite like the shapes in this. It's quite, it feels quite natural. And then the ripped shapes and the more controlled scissor like cutouts. It feels like windows into something. This I like. I like the fact that it's in a sketchbook. And this is something we haven't actually talked about. It's like you've, you can use um, collage in your sketchbook. And it's something that you could probably even do while you're out and about and like arrange things and pick up materials and sort of put them away in your sketchbook. So I think this is a nice way of working. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> this is really nice. I like this. I like that there's actually like hair, some wool lying, lying around. It kind of shows like the, the 3D elements we mm -hmm. were talking about. This is very nice. J Sunday up. Lovely. Oh, I love that this is um, a drawn image and then a collage on top. It kind of feels like it, it shows like how you can build things up using all kinds of materials and it's still a collage. I would still consider, consider this a collage. Technically, would it be a montage? Well, I don't know. And I was going to ask whether, whether you know the, diff the, the actual difference between montage and collage. And I don't know. OK, I'm throwing all rules out the window. <laughs> and I'm just saying. <laughs> doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's still a collage. And then bricolage is obviously yeah. another term as well that we yeah. use. I think it's lovely. I'm sure there are actual stylistic differences, but I think in this in this workshop, I think all, all terminology doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh, somebody's like actually made like talked about because we talked about photo manipulation, right? I think mm. this has been made into a black and white image. I don't think it's originally black and white. Having looked at it, and it and it's like zooming into something, and it feels like something that you would find. But then, um, like I'm already thinking, is that a painkiller? or like a yeah, fork or things that you may bag. have collected over time in your, like when you were going out in your, yeah. in your bag, you know, some tea bags. You, it it kind of tells a, um, a story for me. And, and then making it black and white adds like an extra moodiness to it, you know? Um, and then you have some kind of like, what, what is that fishnet? Um, so it looks like some sort of netting and collage. So I think we're getting such a wealth of, um, wealth of techniques and materials, I think, in such a short space of time. It's quite amazing to see. And I like this one because it's just kind of, it's very, it feels very controlled. It's like, I'm going to only use blue. And he made like a really nice, feels like really nice tonally blue and white sort of abstract mm. image. I think it's nice. Oh, I like <laughs> she's like, she's striking a pose. <laughs> I like this. I feel like it's quite like joyful and quite fun. I'm loving the Frankenstein. Like, yeah, the great. The people are making. Oh, this guy is like obviously been during the lockdown. He's been doing a lot of drinking and eating cereal. Yeah. I think. It's <laughs> 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 a very psychedelic image. I think this tells a story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here for it. Um, oh, this is really lovely. I think I like this. I feel like um, it feels like a, like we're. I'm seeing a group of people at the bottom. The camera's in the way, so I apologise. I can't exactly see the middle. And then there's Godzilla, and there's so much to take from this. There's so much story here. Also, another see. freedom. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really lovely. Freedom. That's what I want, and that's what I need. <laughs> to be outside, and we're starting to get our freedom back, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that this is sort of like a brainstorm and like thinking about things on fast pace. So you've been making notes through, it feels like the, the exercises yeah. and then you have this kind of like wonderful, delicate collage in a way. And the arms and maps. Yeah. yeah, it's really lovely. I, I think there's so much, this, this just shows like how we can all end up with something mm -hmm. completely like the, the, the variety is so wonderful to see and like how different people work you know and, and how and how things can like come come together like how different images can kind of create a new thing absolutely and we you know we're all doing the same exercise and yeah. yet coming up with sort of completely different things and that's obviously um partly due with what you've got at home but completely that you can take it in any direction and um the you know collage yeah as, as we said before like google collage see 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 what the breadth of it also have a look at the ra collection because there's some really great pieces yeah. of collage in our collection um again showing that sort of breadth of things um so i think this is the last this is the last one we're looking at today yeah it's a great draft it's a great one it's like 
it's a small small space, big ideas. That's so true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With a car you can have a sauce. And and yeah, and I think like the, the comment about could you add le like lettering or like slogans and things, it's so it adds an extra layer of meaning, doesn't it? And I think it's there's, there's so much that can be taken from this image and all of the images that we've seen. It's just been so lovely to do this on a Saturday morning. Yeah. It's a nice way to start the day. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, th so um, I think that that's pretty much all we have time for today. But thank you, everybody, for sending those works in. It's really great to see them. And do please keep sharing them with us. We love to see them. Uh, and if you've been inspired, check out our Daily Doodle Challenge on Twitter. Um, next week, we are, if you're joining us, we're going to be looking at anatomical drawing. Um, but all that it leaves me to say is, sorry, thank you so much for such a wonderful session. Um, it's been great. Thank you so much and thank you for the team for inviting me and all the wonderful people behind the scenes who made this happen um, thanks all no worries I mean, it's been fun and thank you to all of you for joining us and uh yes and see thank you, next you to time. the people at home sorry <laughs> thank you so much goodbye <laughs>